Let's move on now to lighting cable. As you may or may not know, anytime a lighting fixture is used, it requires two cables, one to give the fixture power and one to control it. This is a DMX cable. This is the cable that goes between the lighting console and the fixtures, providing the control. Since there are different types of lights, there are different ways of getting control data to them. A moving light takes its data directly into the fixture, whereas a conventional light, like a parkan, requires the use of a dimmer to take in that data, do all the thinking, and then pass that dimming information along to the fixture through its power. DMX can be either a 5-pin or a 3-pin cable, depending on the requirements of the fixture or dimmer. Let's move on now to the power for lighting cables. This is where things get interesting and heavy. Since there are different uh, varieties of lights, there are different ways to plug them in. Some fixtures have U-ground, or also called Edison, which is the regular 15 amp power plug we all know and love. Some fixtures have what's called twist lock connectors. The beauty of these babies is that when you twist them, they lock, <laughs> which is extremely handy since most of them are way up high in the air. Uh, this is a 20 amp cable used for fixtures that require uh, more power than, just, than what you can get from just a regular U-ground circuit. Speaking of very high in the air, <laughs> in the lighting world we often have to deal with very long runs of cable to get the power and control we need to all the lights way up there. And there are usually lots of lights if the lighting guy gets his way. So instead of running all those long, heavy, individual cables up to each and every light, we can use what's known as a Socopex cable. Now, Socopex, or also called Soka, is uh, still crazy heavy, but you can use it to power up to six fixtures. Some dimmers allow you to plug the Soka directly out of them, providing the power that can be broken out into whatever connector you need on the other end for the fixture. If the dimmer doesn't allow this, then you can use a break-in cable splay on the other end as well. The long runs of data are still necessary, but it's a pretty small cable, and it can be daisy-chained or jumped from fixture to fixture to fixture. Sometimes multiple home runs are, of data are required, depending on how large or how complex the system is. Let's talk a little bit more about the different kinds of power cables. This is probably the most common power cable you'll ever encounter when it comes to audio, video, and lighting systems. It's called an IEC, or a Euro. This is the cable that usually comes with whatever piece of equipment you've just purchased. You'll also probably remember this cable from the back of your good old computer tower. Uh, it's always a good idea to keep a few of these guys handy. Another cable that's becoming more and more common is the PowerCon. Uh, this is another cable that is used for both sound and lighting equipment. It looks very similar to the Speakon cable, but thankfully, because of the way it's designed, it's impossible to plug the wrong cable in. PowerCon can also jump from device to device if the devices you're using will allow for it. So we've already looked at twist lock a little bit when we were looking at lighting cables, but there are other kinds of twist lock. This is the 30 amp twist lock cable. It will plug into a distro or potentially a wall outlet if a venue supplies one and will provide power for an entire rack of gear. Two 30 amp cables connect to um, a panel installed in an amp rack with its own breakers so that you can shut down the power to the rack without having to go to the distro. This cable, like the 20 amp twist we looked at before, also locks when it's twisted. It has four prongs, two that carry power, plus a ground and neutral. The distro I spoke of is the means of getting power to a large system in portable environments. Now I'm no electrician, so I can't get too detailed into the inner workings of a distro, but I do know this. The distro still needs to get power from somewhere, and that's when cam lock comes in. This is cam lock, or also called feeder. My advice, if you ever find yourself on a load in or load out crew of a big show, get the new guy to run the cam lock, because it's heavy. This cable runs the long distances between where the venue supplies show power and wherever you've decided your distro needs to live. It has five cables, three legs for power, one ground, and one neutral. They're color-coded, so it's pretty easy to figure out which one goes where. And you guessed it, just like twist lock cable, when you twist it, it locks. The most important thing about cam lock is that it's carrying very high levels of power, so it should only be connected or disconnected when you're sure the power feeding it has been turned off.